the show, ladies. Today we have Mariah on the line with us. This is round two. Last week we talked about yoga. If you haven't listened to it yet, go back and check that out because I truly think it's one of the most important things related to sanity and to health and well-being and just to living a great life for everyone, but dancers in particular. So today the topic with Mariah is going to be about how she's been a dancer for, is it 20 years now? 20 years. I've taken here and there, taken a little time off, but I've been at it for about 20 years. Okay, so for 20 years and she still loves her job. Now, I went through some of your photos on Facebook and I've got to admit, like, you genuinely embrace your sexuality and I love it. You look sexy, you look, you know, like mysterious and happy and you genuinely look like you like what you're doing. And I admire that. I want to know how how you're still doing it. I'll put it that way. Stripping is like a miracle cure for boredom and for being, you know, underprivileged and It's a way out in so many ways. Well, that's a great way to start that, for being underprivileged and it's a way out. And I completely, truly agree with that. My question is, so many girls, my God, so many, at least so many that I worked with, you know, love it at first maybe, but after a little while, they start to take it for granted. Not only that, and tell me if you have not actually witnessed this yourself, but I found a lot of entertainers to be... I don't know if it's bitter. I don't know if it's spoiled. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little of, a little of everything, yeah. Definitely, yeah. but that's just part of accustoming yourself to a certain lifestyle and then being upset when it doesn't deliver the way that you want it to, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so how do you personally avoid feeling like that? Well, I take really good care of myself. Okay. So I always feel great in my body, which I think is the first step to making sure that you are able to make others feel good in their bodies. Mm. And I hold my boundaries. If I, you know, I'm not comfortable with something that, you know, someone wants as a service, I don't do it. And I am kind and cordial about it, but I just refuse, you know, I refuse to do anything that I don't want to do. Have you ever done uh, something that you've really regretted and then you're like, okay, that's a new boundary. I'm not overstepping. Or have you been pretty clear from the get go about what your boundaries are? Well, I'm from the Northwest coast and around here, most of the strip clubs are small town, no touch strip clubs. So that's what I grew up with. That's what I'm comfortable with. Anytime that I've gone to work in a club where people can touch me, I have become very disillusioned with the work really fast. I don't like it. I don't like people putting their energy on me, in their hands on me. I can feel too much. I don't like their vibes. Yeah. You know, some people don't have that kind of energy, but if you allow people to touch you, you're opening yourself up for just a myriad of all kinds of things that people can be really creepy and leaving that feeling, you know. So for me, that's a boundary. I can't let people touch me. And I don't like to work in clubs where people can touch because I don't want to have to try to be the bad guy at the same time while I'm trying to pretend that I want to, you know, do this service for them. Okay, that is a massive insight for me because that absolutely has been one of the most difficult things for me is that is being way too close to customers. Like, it can be awful, right? right. Especially if Yeah, you... and the more empathic you are, you absorb their energy, then, you know, the more sensitive you are to that kind of thing, the worse it can affect you and the faster it can start affecting you. Absolutely. Wow, that is a huge insight. I would have never guessed yeah. you were going to say that, but now that you've said it, it makes complete sense. Oh, I was just going to say, I think there are a few different types of burnout, but Mm -hmm. the major and most common one, I think, comes from not holding one's boundaries, you know, selling what shouldn't be for sale because you're not comfortable rendering that as a service. Right. Oh, my God. That makes so much sense. And I do get really close to my customers. I mean, don't get me wrong. I cuddle right into their faces and I put my whole body all over them, but I do not allow them to reciprocate the cuddle, you know. They have to sit there and just enjoy me being that close to them. So I am really vibing them and I am in their zone. 
they just can't put their hands or their mouth on me. But you're in their zone. They're not allowed to touch yours. Oh my God, I love that. Wow. <laughs> Have you worked at other clubs before that do allow touching? Oh, yeah. Okay, Absolutely. and you didn't like it? Um, no. And you know, I wasn't really able to articulate it at the time, I don't think. I think, you know, I was much younger. And I was kind of new to it, and I was just like, oh, I just really don't like it here. Like, I just, <laughs> oh, it just feel like I didn't want to go to work. And right. I, like, I never feel like I don't want to go to work. I love going to work. It gives me butterflies. Literally, I'm like, oh, I get to go perform for people and be sexy and, like, let my freak out. But then when I was going to work, if I was in a different town where I wasn't from, and the clubs were different, then that was the main difference. If the customers could touch me, I went home feeling creepy, feeling kind of filthy. Wow. Okay, that makes sense. And tell me, did you feel like you made, did, like compared to no-touch clubs, how is the money b between a club that they were able to touch you and a club that they're not able to touch? It was about the same. Really? And yeah, because, well, I'll tell you, I went out to a club in Vegas, a big, huge club where there was hundreds of dancers working. Okay, I've worked there too. Yeah, and I could tell. I, it was easy for me to see that there was plenty more than just stripping going on. I could see there were plenty of services being offered there that I wasn't personally going to offer. Right. And so, for me, the money was comparable. And you have to really kind of choose. Do you want the money or do you want your um, boundaries intact? And, do you want to, yeah. yeah, you have to kind of make that assessment for yourself. Like, how bad do I really need this kind of money? Do I need it bad enough to sell something that I'm not comfortable selling? Like, how will I feel about myself? And that, for me, is a really big deal. I know I can't do it and still feel good about myself at the end of the day. So, for me, that's my system. Wow, that's such an incredible insight to me. Seriously, I really had no idea that you were going to say that because I'm not going to lie. When you told me that you've been doing this for 20 years and you still loved it, I just could not wrap my head around how that was possible. <laughs> and that one thing right there, being in their zone but not letting them come in yours, because it's even more fun when they're not allowed to touch. Oh, it's, it's like so much more fun fun for them too and they don't I, realize that. I bet it is I believe that I totally believe yeah. that because it's kind of like they're not allowed to so it makes them want it more and I totally believe that it really helps if your club helps you to enforce the boundaries you know like if the club helps you and tells customers hey you can't touch her that's really nice but even if your club doesn't there are still things you can do and ways you can communicate to be like you know still fun and engage with them but you just let them know like don't make me tie you up you know like i'm not right. going to touch me just be cute about it and let them know you know i'm sensitive so if you touch me like i might get bruises or i can't dance right if you're touching me your hands are guiding my dance you know i can't move around freely with your hands on me like that that's so accurate. I can't tell you how many times I've been at clubs and I've been like, listen, if you hold still, I can dance <laughs> sexier for you. But when I have to yeah. worry about where your hands are going, I'm going to be very rigid and I'm going to be super concerned the whole time. Like, you've got to hold totally. still. You're going to get a much better dance because yes. I will be able to turn around. I can trust you. I don't have to worry about when I'm when my hands aren't available to hold your hands. You're just going to get a lot more of me if you work by my rules, if you work within my boundaries. I think everyone, whether they know it or admit it or not, I think everyone likes to be teased. I agree. You know, I don't think that it's really that big of a deal that they engage fully and try to, like, possess your body while you're there. I think they really like it. I mean, men watch video porn. And, like, you can't come anywhere near touching them, but they find it very satisfying or it wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar industry. True. They always want to take more, and when they take more, they pay less. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a great start. <laughs> you know, I've been dancing on and off for a long time, and exactly what you just said at the beginning, it is such a great way for people to get out of any kind of situation, for anybody that's underprivileged to get to massive heights to be able to make tons of money mm -hmm. to be able to do whatever yeah. they really want with life. I mean, it is such yeah. a incredible opportunity. And for myself, after doing it for like five or six years, I just got to the point that I was like, I would rather work at a fucking register, which is not really yeah. true because I haven't done that. But it felt like that. It felt so hard for me to make myself go in. And I'm sure it's because I'm empathic. 
So talking to customers, especially now that I've stopped drinking, has been like, you know, how do I separate myself from this person and still make money and not really connect with them because I don't want to go home with any of that energy at all. And having the feeling of them on you can be so gross. It really Uh can. I mean, even, you know, attractive men, like... No, <laughs> just sometimes yeah. I'm so just like, no. Well, I think there comes a point in every stripper's life where men are just not so attractive anymore. Yeah, it's like, I just can't. I don't want to deal with this. In particular, like, I want to start enjoying going to work. I want to do it. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. something I want to figure out and I want to go do because there are lots, I'm sure, lots of women just like me that have been through it and have been like, fuck, I know it's a great opportunity. I know there's so much money in there, but I have so many memories of it and I have so many feelings stored in my body because of it that I just get this feeling that I'm like, ah, I just don't, I don't know. I don't don't... put up with that shit today. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. But I knew that there would be a way to actually go through it and to figure out a way to actually embrace it again and to really like it. And I don't know, I might have to have a cap, maybe one day a week, maybe two, maybe less. I really don't know. But I figured there was a way that it would be able to be possible to actually enjoy it. Not like just do it because you need or want the money, but to actually go and be like, oh, I'm going, oh, oh yeah, today's my day to go to work in a happy, like, yes. okay, this will be fun kind of way. Mm-hmm. Right. It's fun. It's definitely fun. And it's your responsibility to yourself to keep it that way. And there's a lot of great men. I agree. There's a lot of really wonderful men that I meet that I just adore. I just really like working for them. A lot of them, they really appreciate in such a wonderful way. And that's another thing about not letting them touch you. When you don't let them touch you, they come up with other ways to express their appreciation. They speak really great, kind words, and they tell you wonderful things about yourself. You know, they're restrained from putting it on you, so they're able to kind of just sprinkle it over you, you know? Wow, that's awesome. And I love those ones. <laughs> the ones that I don't like dancing for are the ones that are like, well, this sucks, you know? Like, I can't even touch you. It's just like, oh, right. I can't even laugh here. And if you are at a club where that's the only thing that's allowed, like, they should just leave, you know? that There's no mm-hmm. purpose for them to yeah. be there if that's what they're so into. Yeah. Don't watch video porn. Maybe that'll be more exciting for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great thing. <laughs> Well, okay. I mean, that makes perfect sense then. So tell me, what got you into stripping? Boredom, I think. I was 18, almost 19. And there was a very small strip club that opened in my area. And the town really didn't like it. And it had a really bad name from the beginning. And anyway, I was just a very adventurous. And my father was pretty Christian, and I just kind of had a rebellious spirit, I think, and I liked controversy, and I liked doing stuff that was just daring a little. Mm -hmm. I had a daring side, and I was working at a hotel desk, and I was just bored. I went outside and got a newspaper, and I found that there was a little ad that said dancers wanted, and it had little dollar signs around it. (laughs) (laughs) That looks good. Let's go there. And so I was like, okay, I'm I'm pretty hot. (laughs) See what this is all about. (laughs) I went up there. I didn't even have a clue in the world what I was supposed to do. I just went in and just stripped and was like flailing around. And it was just like, okay, you'll do. (laughs) I started working immediately and was the dancers around kind of normalized it for me. And I just took example of what to do and took it from there. I love stories like that. I feel like it takes away so many girls' excuse for being, like, too scared to go in and try. And it's like, there are girls that go in on a dare. They're like, I went in because someone dared me to, and I wasn't planning on working there, but I did it, and I had fun, so I decided to keep doing it. It's like, oh, okay, that's a good story. Amateur night, I think, is the worst way to start. I would agree with that. People go to laugh at the dancers that don't know what they're doing and stuff like that. Yeah, I've gotten hired on a few different amateur nights, so it's not a bad thing. Like, if that's usually the way they hire people, then, you know, no big deal. Uh, But yeah, if there's another option, I wouldn't do amateur 
night either. Man, even just bringing it up brings up so many weird memories for me of amateur nights. Me too. Amateur night is weird. I think it's weird too. I don't know why I'm going to tell this story, but I am. I was at a, <laughs> I was at a club in LA called Foreplay. And they had a amateur night there, and I was there for the amateur night. And it was a lot of dancers that were there uh, auditioning. And there was a girl there with long, light brown hair, no makeup, huge eyebrows, and super, super, super ridiculously hairy legs. She had on a bra and panties. She was clearly not trying to go out and buy it. Yeah. No, she was not trying. I don't know what was going on, but it was Uh, one of the weirdest things. I don't think so. I think she was sober. (laughs) That it was so weird. And after she left, I can't tell you, I still regret it. I still wish I had talked to her and been like, you know, why, yeah. why did you come in? Like, are you, were you, are you trying mm-hmm. to get hired? Like you could get a cute outfit right. and shave your legs and put on some makeup and you probably get hired, <laughs> you know, but I still don't. Right. Maybe that's part of the novelty of it is that the amateurs are really different. Super <laughs> amateur. Yeah. Super amateur. That was so strange. So you've been doing this for 20 years and you still love your job. Tell us some of the reasons why you really like it. How do you feel when you go to work? Well, I walk into work and I'm immediately met with tons of, oh, butterfly here, hey, butterfly, oh, like it's like walking into cheers. You know, the club just feels like it loves me. Every time I walk through, everyone's just like, yay, you know, and then I go and when I come out on the floor, I immediately engage in a social conversation with somebody that I want to have or, you know, it might be someone I know, it might be someone I've never met before, it might be someone from Indiana, it might be someone from England, you know, and I just like t- start talking and we just talk about whatever comes up so you know you have this social life it's like a forced social life it's great because you hear about what people think like how the general public is doing and what's going on with their politics that day and you just hear about so much stuff I mean I wouldn't even need the news if I didn't listen to it because I hear about everything right and just to get everybody's perspective, you know, I talk to people from Germany and I ask them you know how strip clubs are where they live so I get all this insight people who live in halftime in Thailand or whatever and just what it's like over there. And I just get a lot of perspective from people and then I go and I dance and I get to get naked and be safe. You know, yeah. like I don't have to worry about anybody trying to maul me or anything like that. I mean, you know, I get sexual harassment and that's fine with me. I'm not offended by sexual harassment as long as I'm in the strip club getting paid for it. Mm, yeah. So that's just fine. You know, if someone harasses me on the street, I get pissed about it. I don't like it. I'm always like, uh, no. It costs right. money to sexualize me, motherfucker. I work right <laughs> over there. You can find right. me in the club. Yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, just the dancing part, of course, because I love my music and I love expressing myself and I love being sexual. And just the whole power of seduction really makes me feel really elated inside. It's almost an escape from normal reality. I really like my character. I really like the flow, the dance. I just like being artful with my movement. And that brings me a lot of joy. And then being appreciated, people telling me, compliments all night is really uplifting and makes me feel great even though I know that you know those people's opinions don't really matter and I know that my sex appeal is only a very small part of who I am it still makes me feel good to get compliments and people to know that I'm having an impact on someone's life a positive way they enjoyed my performance it's just like being an ice skater or, or something else people are just like wow you're amazing how do you do that it's just beautiful to watch you know really just stuff like that it's It's art. It's my art. It's my expression. I love it for that. And I don't have to work long hours. I don't have to work if I don't feel like it. If I'm feeling really like I don't want to, I can always opt out. And I can make my own schedule. I don't have to work five days a week. I don't have to work eight hours every day that I work. There's just really a lot of freedom to it that I find really liberating from life before stripping. And money, of course. You know, there's however much you want, you can go get it if you want it. Like, the lifestyle here is not a big hustle. Everybody kind of moves slowly, and life moves slowly. You know, like, when the light turns green, people don't just go. They kind of, oh, oh, the light's green. (laughs) It's not like California where people are just like, fucking get out of the way. Like, it's just not like that here. So coming from, I moved here from California, and when I moved here, like, I was on a hustle. I was, like, in the club being like, boom, 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 all right. (laughs) Like, 
whack them all, you know, being like, all right, I got him, got him, got him, like, you know, and these other girls are just sitting there watching me fly back and forth, like, what is she doing? <laughs> you know, like, you don't have to, you know, be like a hardcore hustler, but if you want to be, you can get pretty good money, you know? Right. Support yourself and take really good care of yourself. And I have a pretty good standard of living. I really like to make sure that the food, every food that goes in my body is the quality that I want. So I'm able to afford the lifestyle that I want. And if I need something, I go out and buy it. And music and the sisters, you know, the friends that around. And if you're like in a hard place in life emotionally and you go into work, like, you're going to be surrounded by people who are doing worse than you or that make you feel better about how you're doing. After all, you know, we have like a, a camaraderie between just the other dancers that is usually really, you know, it's friendly and it's fun and it's a fun atmosphere. So it helps to, you know, forget about what you're going through or feel better about it, I guess. Yeah, some of the people I've cared the most about have been girls from the strip club. That's for sure. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of good women, too. Totally. How's your management there? The management is, you know, really mild. They don't really do very much from what I can understand, like, but I can see. There's only maybe one manager, maybe two working on a shift and they're, you know, they're just kind of wandering around. It's like, there's no big incident. There's always men in the strip club. It's never a time when there's no men in the strip club. There's not a lot of bad things to take care of. Like the, the manager has a pretty easy job. He just tries to stop girls from fighting with each other, tries to stop rules from being disobeyed. They kind of work with the floor guys to make sure that people aren't taking pictures or videos in the club or mauling the dancers or whatever. You've never had or don't have any problems with them? They don't get on you about stupid stuff or they don't harass you for any stupid reason or anything like that? No, definitely not. I don't see that happening, no. Where all have you worked before? You worked in Vegas. Where else? Well, I started in Humboldt County, Northern California. That's my home club. Oh, and I worked that's there for awesome. I really wanted yeah. to move there for a, a long time and grow weed, actually. Yeah. That's really yeah, cool. It's, Is it's there good money there? There was. Okay. There was when weed was a big thing. You know, the market has changed so much since medical marijuana and then recreational marijuana has been legalized in so many close states. And so there's not a lot of money in that kind of farming anymore. You're just kind of a farmer like everybody else. You're a weed farmer and that's what you love and you continue to do it. But it's not like gobs of money like it used to be at all. I'm surprised that there's a strip club there. I wouldn't have thought it was a very big town mm -hmm. at all, but I don't know where I got that idea from either. Yeah. So. It had just opened when I started, so it's probably been there maybe 20, 25 years, and it's gone through a couple of changes of hands, and for a while it was owned by women, and that was a major part of the time that I worked there. It was owned by some sisters, and they had worked there forever. And just any strip club, honestly, you can make good money if you are really trying, but there's not a lot of patronage. So last time I was down there it was a few years ago. And it was kind of like there were more dancers than men, and the dancers were kind of packing up on the gentlemen, like they were like, mm. like going up to them in pairs and threes and being, you know, kind of like forcing them. But now I think they've changed that club to not just a strip club, but to a nightclub music venue of some sort. And there's still dancers, but the dancers have a lot more limitations on what they can show because they started serving alcohol. And a lot of things changed then. Ah, uh, okay. Do you work with other girls? Like going up in pairs and stuff? In our club, we're not allowed to be within four feet of another person when we have our clothes off or anything off. So we actually, we don't do pairs on stage or anything like that. We do one at a time. We do have a couple of different stages. And if it gets really busy and there are enough dancers, then they say they'll open this other stage. But I haven't seen them do it, so I don't know. Wow, um, so you're not even allowed to work with another girl, basically? We can do, like, private dances with another dancer, but we do all of our dances with our outfit on because we can't take our clothes off within four feet of people. So we have a line on the stage. We have to stay behind that stage when we're naked, and we get fully naked, and we have alcohol, but we can only get naked behind the four-foot line on the stage. Right. Okay. I know exactly what you're talking about because I worked in San Francisco for a while, and they had me do mm -hmm. that. I kept forgetting kept about up. that stupid line. I thought they were going to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, I would take off really, my top you know, and then I'd go up to guys at the side of the stage and be like, oh shit, I'm not supposed to be here. 
Right, but at Chip Top, if I can humble, we did fully nude lap dances. I started out doing fully nude lap dances right in people's faces. And that was one of the times that I learned to love it so much. When I first started, I was not doing lap dances. I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, but to me, that seemed just really crazy. But then when I started doing them, I realized that it was the opposite of what I thought. It was amazing. Like, the men their reactions and their compliments was like, holy crap, this is personally empowering. (laughs) They loved it. And they would compliment me on my vagina. I was like, what? (laughs) That's a thing, but okay. (laughs) Like, I didn't know that one would compliment you on your vagina just from looking at it. (laughs) Right. Right. I know what you mean. I was on stage once and I had this guy say, he was with a group of his friends and he goes, you have the prettiest vagina I've ever seen. (laughs) It's like, oh, thank you. I love that compliment. That's so sweet. Like, they don't realize how much that means. It's It's true. I I would have never known that if I hadn't been a stripper, you know? Yeah. Like, honestly, a lot of times when I've had actual sex with people in life, they haven't really taken the time to examine my vagina and be like, oh, this is Right, that's so true. I was just thinking about that, too. I've never had anyone in real life tell me that now that I think about it. I'm like, wait a minute. The fuck? Yeah, so that's that's another reason to love it. Yeah. Like, you get compliments on body parts that you didn't think. Well, that is so true. Like, I feel like guys inside the strip club will just openly compliment you about things you would never have thought about that people outside of the club just don't do like people just don't compliment like guys in the club do it is such a confidence booster yes and it makes you realize what you're worth so you don't settle right I totally agree with that I think it's personally empowering it's like if you have no reason to think that you are valuable to purchasable then a lot of times people get into situations with people who don't deserve them because they don't know what they're worth. Right. I can't tell you how many different girls I've had message me and they're so scared and it's so clear that they have no idea of self-worth at all. And it's tragic mm-hmm. because they're gorgeous. And it's like, what happened to them to mm-hmm. make them think what that they... What did they do to you? Yeah. yeah, something has happened. And honestly, maybe even it's something that happened in their childhood. I mean, their mm-hmm. parents could have been it. mean or they could have had someone mm-hmm. say something to them that they don't even remember but it's caused this feeling of incredibly low or no self-esteem. Yeah, it's a beautiful reason to become a stripper because so many girls don't want to start because they have no confidence, but I'd say it's the number one thing that will change in your life if you become a dancer is your confidence will go through the roof. Yeah, the men are going to love you, Mm -hmm. and the men are going to be nice. (laughs) And they're going to be nice. Yeah, it's different than the real world. It really is. It's so different. It is. It's really different because in the real world, when someone likes you or adores you, they pretend they don't, right? Yes. They try to, like, lower your confidence so they'll have a better chance, or they try to ignore you because you did only think that they're desperate or whatever game might be. That's so true. Isn't that crazy? In the strip club, the dynamic is different. Yeah, they really want to impress you. They really want you to choose them, which is very different from the real world because in the real world, men think they're the ones to be chosen. I can remember a friend of mine sent me a video of some moron that made a video about how to get strippers. And it was some bullshit about sitting with them and basically ignoring them, not giving them money, just doing a bunch of shit that no dancer I know of would put up with. And I was like, tell your friend he's a fucking moron because that wouldn't work on anyone I've ever met. Oh, it would work on some girls I know. There are, like you said, some girls that they just value themselves so little yeah that you know it, sometimes they'll be in a situation where somebody will be trying to game them like that and they'll actually fall for it and get pissed get emotional and come back in the dressing room being like oh like huffing and puffing and being like that guy just you know what he just said to me i'm sitting there not chipping and they're just steaming and i'm just like okay bitch you're doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker does not deserve a fucking morsel of your consciousness. Like, just no. stop thinking about him existing in the world and move the fuck on. Like, right. Ignore him. That's something else I really want to know how you do, because there are a lot of girls that will spend way too much time thinking about something that somebody that they don't even know said about Mm -hmm. them, and this person Mm -hmm. literally has no relevance in their life whatsoever. (laughs) How do you wipe it away and be like, I don't care? Like, how did you come to the conclusion to be able to do that? 
That's a good question. I'm not sure how it developed. You know, I can remember a time when people's criticisms did get to me, but I don't know. Like somewhere along the line, it went away. Yeah. I started realizing that there were enough people who appreciated me and I appreciate myself enough to not have to worry about what somebody who doesn't, I mean, somebody who doesn't appreciate me or is going to act like an asshole to me before even knowing me, they don't really deserve my time anyway. And they're, they're a very small percentage of people. I can totally live without those people in my world. I don't need to win their approval at all. I can just go on with my life and keep making money. Like, it's just the same thing as trying to sit there and therapy someone who needs psychological help. It's like, this isn't worth my time. I mean, I know I could help you. I could make you understand if I had the time and energy to do it, but that's not what I'm here for. And I'm going to move on and go make money. That's exactly the same answer I would have given. It yeah. comes with experience and it comes with time and it comes with realizing holy shit, there's a lot of people in the world and this fucker does not matter. This person <laughs> really doesn't matter. So it no. becomes easier to truly let go of what has happened with that person. I do think it's a little bit different when somebody has physically violated you. I think that for myself, that makes it a little bit harder to let it go. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it shouldn't be, right? I do have all these like woo-woo thoughts about their energy still being with you and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do I get rid of that? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want well, any part of that person one, in my... Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for spending the time. Forgive yourself for thinking that they were worth it. I think that is a major step to moving past it. Is just be like, oh, I made a mistake. I fucked up. And, I, I talked you know, to that like, guy. I'm sorry, self. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just forgive yourself because people make mistakes and nobody fucking does this shit perfect. And even after 20 years, I still go up to people and say the wrong shit and right. learn from my mistakes and allow people to get away with stuff that I shouldn't have. And, you know, like sometimes your energy levels are different for dealing with bullshit. And that's right. just, you know, you have to be able to take that in stride and be like, okay, next time I'm going to do better. Yeah, letting go. I think that's a huge, hugely important thing for coming back to work every day. You know, everything that happened that went wrong the day before, I'm just going to let it go and I'm going to not worry about it and I'm going to go back in again the next day. I'm going to learn from it. Yeah, I'm going to learn from it and next time I'm going to protect myself. Right. Because that is, that's basically a boundary. Like being treated a certain way is a boundary. Somebody being able to get to you, say something that hurt you or something that stuck with you, that can be identified as a boundary and be like, okay, I'm not going to let people get to that point with me at all. And if they do, I'm going to walk away and realize that by doing that, I'm enforcing my boundary on that. Yeah. The times I can think of that really got to me were times that I danced for someone and they tried to fuck me over. And those are the ones that mm -hmm. really, really got to me. I felt yeah. super gross about myself. Just gross. I can't really describe it. Yeah, cheapened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a great word for it. Right. Like someone didn't value your service and they tried to get away with not paying you. Is that what you're saying? Right. Like I had this one guy... I did a dance for him, and the entire song, he was trying to proposition me to go back to his room. And I was so disgusted by this human being, I can't even <laughs> tell you. So as soon as the song was over, you know, normally, I feel like every dancer should ask if the customer wants another dance, because mm -hmm. once you've sold somebody, it's a lot easier to keep selling the same person than to try again <laughs> with other people. But I didn't yeah. want to have anything to do with this person. So <laughs> I started to get dressed and I told him, you know, I was like, all right, that's $30. I was so grossed out by this guy. And he was basically like, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I didn't agree to that. And he goes to hand me $5. And I just <laughs> felt so, oh my God, uh, violated, yeah, you're and violated, angry, yeah. and just disgusted. I was so disgusted with this guy. And, right. you know, that stuck with me for too long. And it makes me wonder, because I had another guy try to fuck me over, too. He didn't want to pay me the $900 that he owed me. But I didn't dance Ooh. for him the whole time. I was just sitting there talking to him while he was trying to convince me to go back to his room. But I told him I was charging him for these songs. And he knew it. And I was updating him frequently on how much he owed me. And when he didn't want to pay me, I wasn't disgusted. But I was super angry because I was very clear with him what he owed me the entire time. I wasn't trying to get away with anything shady. Like, I was very upfront about it. 
And I was very angry when he didn't want to pay me. You know, I didn't even for a moment lead him to believe that I was going to go back to his room with him. I wasn't trying to lead him on Mm -hmm. at all. I never once even kind of hinted at, yeah, maybe Mm -hmm. this is a possibility. It was a straight no every single time. And after I finally got paid from him, all my anger and anxiety and stress completely went away. And I was like, okay, (laughs) you know, it was worth my time. (laughs) It was totally worth my time because I just sat there literally all night and, you know, didn't have to bounce from person to person. So it's interesting. Some men are totally delusional. Some of them totally think that they are getting somewhere, even if we're giving them no reason to think that they're getting somewhere. Sometimes (laughs) they think resistance just means try harder. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can't get your money first, then just collect every time you reach a hundred bucks or something. It and is. just be like, well, I don't know if you're good for it. Like, how am I supposed to know you're going to pay me? I've been fooled before. Just let them know that it's not that you don't trust them. It's just that people have fooled you before. Right. So the only problem today. I see with that, and it's because I've experienced it personally, is when doing that, in my cases, it's killed the vibe. So it's like mm-hmm, it we go from fantasy world to, okay, I need you to pay me because I don't trust you. And I'm not right. actually doing this because I like you. I'm doing this so I can get paid. Right. That should be a given at first. I mean, like, they should know when they walk in the club that these girls are not here to right. do it for free for you. Definitely. And uh, also, it also depends on your voice when you say it. You know, true, a lot of times if, if you're being demanding about it or if you're just like, okay, time to pay or whatever, then that, does like, make that, a that can definitely kill the fantasy. But if you kind of stay in character and do it like a fantasy creature would do it, yeah. then it can it can come out good. You just have to be a little more creative sometimes, you know, and take into account who you're working with. And you can even say things like, you're not one of those guys that's going to try to run out of here and not pay me, you know, because I had to work with one of those guys and you can tell the story and, you know, the, oh, no, I'm not that guy, you know. Just kind of get the assurance. And then also you can just, like, in passing, let him know, okay, good, because my bouncer's right over there. And if you don't pay me, he can get pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would go that far, but I'm sure it's very effective. I'm sure it would be yeah. very, very effective. I got to admit, I've always just chanced it because I can remember this one Asian guy I was dancing for. We made it to like $700 in dances, and I had to pee so bad, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go to the bathroom. I did not want to stop him. I so didn't want to stop him, but I couldn't Mm -hmm. stand it anymore. I have to be right back. I was like, don't move. I was like, I promise we'll continue as soon as I get back. I mean, this guy was totally in fantasy land, just gone. I don't know where he was in his head, but he was just gone. And by the time I came back, he wasn't there anymore. And, you know, I was fast. I went super fast, but he had snapped back into reality. You know, he was back in reality. And it was like, okay, now, you know, he owes me 700 bucks. And I was like, God damn it. I was like, I so wish I didn't have to go that bad. So you didn't get your money before you went to the bathroom? Girl, I had to go. I knew (laughs) that he was going to pay me. I I didn't have a doubt in my mind that he wasn't going to be there when I got back. He was clearly very comfortable in himself. He was clearly very wealthy. Like, I knew he wasn't going anywhere. Plus, the bathroom was right by the front door. I knew I'd be fast enough that he wasn't going to run out. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I guess you can just assess how you're doing, you know, with each customer. You can kind of tell if they're an honest type or, or I if feel like, you know, the, like for the most part, that's definitely true. But I have absolutely been fooled <laughs> yeah. before. So, oh, yes, we all have. That's a big one. I mean, that's something that every stripper has dealt with is the guy who doesn't want to pay. Yes, I mean, that's a big issue. Yeah. If you seriously rack up $700 in dances and then you don't get paid for that, that can cause you to be really disillusioned for a while. Oh, yeah. Like, it makes you not want to go back to work. That's yeah. A, that's a big deal. Yeah. I don't let people get over 100 if I don't know them. Unless I really get a good feeling from them, I usually just collect it. And I don't know, like, maybe it would be strategic to confirm that we're going to keep going already. You know, like, go ahead and get them to agree to the next dance and then tell them, okay, but before I do that, I have to get the money from you right quick. And then you can glance at their stash to see if they're good for it, first of all. Yeah. Kind of like see if they have the money and then how their vibe is about paying it. And then if you see they have a whole bunch of money, you can kind of keep going a little farther than that. Yeah, I definitely 
got screwed over by knowing that someone had money. I knew he had money. I made a video about this a while ago. I knew this guy had money, and I also knew he couldn't withdraw any more money from the ATM, but he had PayPal. And I was like, well, if he's got a bunch of money in his bank account and he has PayPal, I can just take money from PayPal. And then I got into an argument with my managers <laughs> And while I was in an argument with my manager about how, you know, was not allowed to accept PayPal, the guy went out the door. That would have never happened if I had just ignored my managers and sat down with him because he wouldn't have ran. I would have fucking chased him. If he was in front of me, I would have chased him. I would have been like, no, you were absolutely going to pay me. I've only been walked out on one time. And then I had that one guy pay me. He tried to hand me $5, but I ripped his shirt open instead and just walked away. I was like, fuck this guy. So, yeah. Um, so are you not able to have them removed from the club? It, that club, I have no idea. I didn't work there long enough to find out. Yeah. If someone doesn't pay us, like we, we do have to take the hit. That the club can't make them pay us if we can't make them pay us, but they will be removed. If they must use the pay desk, it's like they'll put a picture of them at the front door and don't let this person in again. Yeah, you know, have you ever wondered nice why? Dress. Why can't they make them pay? Like, what is up with uh-huh. that? Why can't we call the cops yeah. on these people? Like, they got a legit uh-huh. service and they did not pay for it. That's robbery. Right, right. I think so too. I know. Why isn't that stealing? Yeah, and it's on Another tape, thing. right? It's on video, right, right. so it's not like it, there's not <laughs> proof, like solid proof that this just happened. Mm-hmm. That is a really interesting question. Why can't they make them? Like, I mean, just like any other business, why can't they stop them from walking out the door without paying Yeah. The, what is the bouncer there for? I mean, why do you even <laughs> have a bouncer? Yeah, yeah. And it's not fire when I was working there. They collected payment for all of the private dance before they even started. They were like, no, motherfucker, your time is up. You're right. Again. And they would be up there. And, like, they were not cute or nonchalant about it at all. They were in the motherfuckers. Face. You are going to pay. <laughs> are you talking about the dancer or was it at the door? The door like, to the VIP room or whatever? Yeah, the VIP guy. That's if what I thought. There and you had finished your time in the VIP, they would come up with a clipboard like, here you go, sign here, dude. If you want to go, you do this now. You right. know, they were harsh about it. It was like, to me, that would have broken fantasy. I thought they could be nicer about that. They could be like, hey, do you want right. to that like, Or have a girl like, do it. Please. I think I want to have a club someday <laughs> with all women mm-hmm. bouncers, but the caveat yeah. is... They would have tasers, right? So if some... Or just be martial artists. Yeah, that'd be even better. If some guy got out of line, like, you could just tase them. You know, I mean, like, super, (laughs) super out of line. Not like, you know, whatever, like, somebody's going to get in a fight or something. Because you wouldn't want one of your beautiful bouncers to try to break up a fight, but she could just taste them. But but the men, they tend to listen to the females. They tend to do what they're told. And it's like a hot girl tells them to do it. Right? That might work. I think so. (laughs) Yeah. Another thing that I found, if someone was acting like they didn't want to pay... Basically, my instinct kicked in, and I just grabbed something from them. I grabbed their keys or their hat or their glasses or something mm, like that. I've just, done the same you know, thing. You know, just grab it right quick and be like, you're not leaving until you pay me, and you're not going to get far without these. <laughs> you know? I've done the exact same thing, and it worked. It did. It worked. Yeah. I had a guy come mm-hmm. in, that Mine too. he didn't want to pay me. Yeah, he me. was counting his ones. <laughs> Yeah, this guy was counting his one. He seriously had to count it all out. <laughs> yeah, it's not okay. It's not okay to go into a club and fuck someone over. It's just not acceptable. Yeah. And I knew at the club I was at at the time, I knew damn well they weren't going to do anything about it. And this Ooh. kid, I asked him after every single song, do you want to do mm-hmm. another one? And by the time mm-hmm. we made it to four, he finally said he was done. And he didn't even reach in his pockets to look and see if he had money. He knew he he did not have money. I was so angry. Yeah, that's the wording. Like, if you're able to word it in a way, it's like, do you want to buy another one or something like that? Then maybe it will kind of... He would have had to have been deaf and blind to not understand that I was telling him. So there's no way he was not crystal clear on the fact that we were getting up to four songs and it was going to run him $100. And I did exactly what he said. I took his glasses right Right. off his face and I put him in Mm -hmm. my hand and balled it up into a fist. (laughs) I was ready to just crush them. Like. Serious. Yeah, like, it is. It's not just something we're doing for fun, you know. Like, this isn't something that we would take time away from our families to go and do if it wasn't fucking worth it. I wouldn't money, take so. time away from myself yeah. to go do it. Yeah. So, tell me, is there any other major reasons that you really love being a dancer? Does anything else pop into mind? 
I think I pretty much went through all of the things off the top of my head that I can think of. And yeah, I mean, it just gives me new reasons to love it every time I go to work. I mean, really unique compliments. Things that you would never get in life. I can make a religion out of you. You know, something like people, you know, just powerful compliments that are just, wow, like, thank you. Just fills you up with so much personal joy and it's really gratifying work in so many ways and I mean probably not everybody would have the same experience or feel like that they were that worshipped in it but for me that's what it's been and that's what I enjoy most about it you know the art the movement the social life the freedom to make my own choices of when and how to work and feeling safe being naked and sexual like everything like that for sure oh that's and beautiful yeah, if you're having a hard time being able to have a drink at work, that's right. You know? <laughs> if you're having How many a... people get to do that if you're having a rough day? You know? Oh, you can have a drink, yeah. Or you can tell someone to fuck off. There's not a little job out there where, you know, you're feeling like, I fucking hate this guy. I would like to punch him in the face. But you just get to tell him to fuck off and sometimes you get a little punch him in the face. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> I like it. I was also going to say a couple other things about burnout. I think there are a couple of kinds of burnout that are not, that don't have to do so much with the boundary thing. And I think that one of them is exhaustion, just being super tired and working too much or not being properly nourished or properly hydrated. There's a lot of things that just self-care can cure if you're feeling like you're just tired. You know, it's not that you hate the work. It's just you don't have the energy level to keep up with what you need to be doing there. And the other is if you're at a point in your career where nothing that you do makes you like it, you absolutely just hate the way that they look at you, like having to do this. You know, if you're feeling like you're starting to hate men altogether, I mean, that's a different kind of burnout. Really, it's kind of like a signal of being done, I think, and yeah. just needing to find other work or just do it every once in a great while when you need the relief or something like that. Yeah, that's a super great point. I got to tell you, I'm going to go find a club that they're not allowed to touch and I'm going to see. <laughs> I'm going to see how, how yeah. it goes, see what the difference is. Right. See if it I feels. encourage you to. Yeah. It's good practice for you to learn how to enforce your boundaries in life in general, but it's also good practice for them to learn what consent is, you know, like right. you don't just get to be entitled to put your hands all over somebody who hasn't invited you to or assume that because this girl seems like she's asking for it or whatever, that you just get to go and take what you want from this person. This is an autonomous human being, you know. So I think in many ways, the boundary enforcement is a really crucial aspect that all of us should be employing in our work. We should never be allowing people to just have their way with us, whatever they want. You know, that's just a bad message to send in general to the world. Oh, I love that. That's how I'm going to look at it. I'm going to go in and I'm going to teach men some lessons. <laughs> yeah, you teach them, but do it without making them feel like they're being taught a lesson. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of kidding. <laughs> well, power. Not like women's rights fund. Not like permission. <laughs> did you see that amazing video that Will Wayne did for Saturday Night Live? Oh, no, but I think permission. I need to. You have to go and watch it. It is so Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Send me a anyway. link to it. I want to watch it. All right, Mariah, thank you so much for your insights. This has been truly enlightening. I've been waiting all week for this conversation. I can't tell you how much I was like, how? How is that possible? I just I don't know how. So this has been incredibly insightful for me because... I never would have thought about that. I wouldn't have thought it would be a totally different experience if I didn't Mm -hmm. let them touch me. And that totally makes so much sense. I mean, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really, really really big deal. So I can see how that can help, you know, tons of girls that have just reached the point Mm -hmm. that they're like, I just don't think I want to do this anymore to give them a different perspective on it, to be able to be in the guy's space, but not let him in theirs. I mean, it almost sounds like this invisible force field, which sounds pretty nice to utilize. So yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. I'm writing a book about it. So um, yeah, tell me about your book. My book is called The Empowered Showgirl. It's just all about how to do this work. Well, the subheading of the book is how to be a badass stripper without selling your soul. Oh my God, I love that. It's all about how to, you know, like not all strippers are going to be in agreement and I'm ready for that. But to me, it's a really big deal. And I think that the message needs to be out there for those of us who do want to 
hold our boundaries and not work that way. Like a lot of times girls get into stripping and don't realize that that's just not what happens. Uh, I was talking to a friend the other day who told me that when she first started working, like a lot of the men were trying to lead her to believe that the other girls were doing things. Basically, you know, she was young and impressionable and she thought, well, everybody's doing this. They're just not talking about it. And so she was allowing the men to get away with things, you know, that basically were making her feel not good. And so, you know, that's just like one example out of a lot. A lot of dancers start and they don't really know what to do or what's for sale and what's not for sale. And that's my book kind of helps to draw those lines, like helps you to set your boundaries, helps you to realize how to do this work and do it really well. It's a lot of it is just like a guide for like create your character and dress for your character and pick the right shoes. And there's a lot of stuff instructional in there, but it's also just about being true to yourself and making sure that you're not selling too much. Oh, I so. love that. Well, I can't wait until you're finished with it. And when you are, we'll put it in a link somewhere on this page. Yeah, it's in final edit thing. right now. I'm oh, actually good. finished with it. And I'm, yeah, and my friend is editing it for me because she's a really badass editor. And when, as soon as it's copywritten, then I'm going to just start putting it out there. I'm going to self-publish it so just to get it going because I feel like it really, the world needs it. A lot of dancers need it. And I don't really want to wait around for some publisher to think that it's good enough so I think I'm just gonna do it myself. I love that idea well I want to read it (laughs) and when I do maybe you can come back on and we can talk about it. Absolutely that'd be great. That sounds awesome. Mariah, it's been such a blessing to get to know you. You are a incredible person, and I really, really, really appreciate this time that we've shared together. I am sure it's going to help a lot of people, myself included. So thank you so much for sharing your incredible insights with us. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure. It's nice getting to know you, too. And stay in touch. I will, absolutely. Have a wonderful night, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for listening, everybody. I am super stoked about what I just heard, about all the information that we just got. I know for sure I'm going to look for a club that I can do this because it's a goal of mine to actually start to like stripping again because like I've been preaching, truly it's the best job you can possibly have as a female with no experience in anything, to make a lot of money, have no or barely any schedule, to work the hours that you want to work, to have basically no ceiling on your income. The benefits of being a stripper, the confidence that you'll gain from it, the benefits are innumerable, it seems. And I've just been doing it for so long that I need a fresh perspective. And I am empathic. And I know that touching people is a problem for me. And maybe this could solve it. So for any of the girls that have been dancing for a long time, maybe this is our answer. Maybe we should try working at a club that they are not allowed to touch us. This could be a game changer. So thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did. Have a wonderful evening or day or night or whatever it happens to be. And we will talk soon. Ciao.